Hey guys, Shauna here. Welcome back to Making Everyday Magic. Today, I just wanna ask you a, um, a pretty serious question. Is your homeschool breaking the law? Now, you may be wondering exactly what I am talking about, but if you can't faithfully tell me that it's not, you might need to go back to the drawing board and do a little bit more homework to be certain that your homeschool does in fact comply with the laws set up by your state. Before we go any further, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. If you've been here for any period of time, then you know that I am trying to spread the word, make a community here uh, for secular homeschoolers. This is that time of year when people are starting out. This year in particular has been so crazy and has seen such a large influx of homeschoolers uh, starting out, beginning. And so with that, I think there's been a lot of uh, confusion. And I just wanna take a minute to clarify and help out, point you in the right direction so that you can be 100% certain that you're doing everything that you need to be doing so that your homeschool is not in fact breaking the law. Homeschooling is defined as uh, schooling somewhere other than at school. So not in a public school, not in a private school. Um, it is either through a tutor, um, some sort of virtual like distance-based program or uh, with your parents or guardian in the home. Homeschooling is legal in all 50 states, and it is legal in a, a large number of developed nations across the world. So it is very easy um, to come to homeschooling, and it is definitely widely accepted, becoming more and more so uh, with the current shade of events. Uh, but it's very important to make sure that you're doing the things that are necessary to have and run a lawful homeschool. So while it is legal all across the US, the actual decisions and laws are left up to each individual state because each individual state is in charge of the education for their state. And so the uh, compliance and laws of homeschool vary by each state. Now, this is important to know uh, where you are and what your laws are, but also if you're planning to move to a different state, these are things that you definitely need to take into consideration so that you can be sure that you are fully complying and, and doing everything above board. As I've mentioned tons and tons of times, I am in Texas and the Texas homeschool laws are very lax. Meaning that the school is required for ages six to 18 and completing their schooling. You do not have to give any notification to the state. If you have been enrolled in a public school program, you do have to officially and formally unenroll, but that is just as simple as a letter, an email, um, getting in contact with your school or your district. It's very simple here in Texas. You do not have to be any kind of qualified teacher. There is no uh, qualification requirements for the person who will be performing the homeschool. There are five state mandated subjects and those are spelling, reading, grammar, good citizenship, and math. Good citizenship is like civic, social studies, those kinds of things. So those are actually the only things that you have to teach. It is also required that you use a bona fide curriculum, which means basically it can't be a sham. So as long as you can, you can prove if it ever came down to it, which is highly unlikely, that you actually have some sort of plan of things that you're teaching, you're totally fine. There's no attendance requirements. Uh, you don't have to report anything to the state uh, to show your progress. There's no end of your testing. Um, you don't have to keep any records. So the requirements to homeschool in Texas are actually um, pretty small. They're some of the smallest in the entire nation. And there are a lot of states that fall into a similar kind of a low compliance tier, I guess. But there are some states 
that fall under extremely rigorous standards. There are so many resources out there to make sure that uh, homeschoolers' rights are protected and that they have the information that they need. So great places to look for this information is your state education website. Uh, that's a great place to look for this. Another great place is here in Texas, we have the Texas Homeschool Coalition. As I've mentioned before, that secular voice is so small and um, it's not really there at all. But take the things that help you and just leave the rest of that behind. Uh, it is a great wealth of information and they do work very hard to support the rights of the homeschoolers here in Texas. Um, they just have a pretty, pretty large non-secular leaning. Um, there's also another great website, which I am actually going to pop over and show you. There we go. Homeschool laws by state. HSLDA is making homeschooling possible and you can search there's such a wealth of information here how to start of course they have a membership uh things to teach i mean there's ways to keep records how to get in high school and beyond special needs testing uh the legal implications is really what i want to talk about today you can see in this kind of click down and you can find it right here because that's specifically what i googled but the homeschool laws by state, homeschooling in my state, legislation action center, and then the international laws. So this is very handy because uh, guys, it helps you protect your rights, which is really important. So as you see, they have this map here and it's interactive, you can click on it anywhere and it's color coded. Now look at this color coding down here. There's no notice required, low regulation, moderate regulation and high regulation. So just, just a few states up here in the Northeast have the high regulation. Like I said before, I'm in Texas and there's like practically not a, um, and then there's moderate regulation and low regulation. So let's just take a quick glance at uh, the four states that I mentioned, California, Texas, Florida, and New York, just to give you an idea of what is, uh, is really going on there. So, I think there is a lot of misconception about the laws and about what it takes to homeschool and how hard it is to do. And I appreciate that this organization is really going through and simplifying it so that more families can feel empowered to do what is best, um, you know, on their educational path for their families and their kiddos. So that's really important. All right. Uh, totally not biased. Let's start with Texas. There we go. And it tells you uh, some of this information. So there's options for homeschooling is one, and that is you just teach the required subjects. Boom. It really is that simple here in Texas. So there's this nice little chart right here. When schooling is required, notification, uh, state mandated subjects, all these things. So you can click the view complete details and that will take you right back to where we were. There's more information across here, how to withdraw, uh, public school access for homeschoolers in Texas, special education provisions, the importance of record keeping in Texas, uh, all kinds of information. And they really do break this all down by state, which is pretty amazing. So that was Texas. Let's glance over here at Florida. There's three options for homeschooling. Apparently you only have to go through 16. Homeschooling under the homeschool statute, uh, private school umbrella program, which I think is actually pretty common, and homeschooling with a private tutor. Um, let's see. There's no qualifications for parents, but there would be if you were like labeling yourself as a teacher uh state assessments immunizations and that's another thing that can be really important to families is their immunizations uh, and having to comply with that in order to go to public school the california requirements here it's the same three i think options for homeschooling and all of this will help you know exactly what you should be doing and keeping yourself really, really uh, in the green. Be a law-abiding citizen, guys, and make sure that you are doing what needs to happen. Notif notification required is yes. State needed subjects, yes. Assessment requirements, yes. There's only one option for homeschooling. Let's see what that is. Uh, 
Uh, you just have to submit a notice of intent, an individualized home instruction plan. So you have to basically apply uh, and get approved, uh, showing them what you're going to use. So that's pretty interesting. Day, hour, and subject requirements. So they have a minimum number of days, a minimum number of hours, which means you're keeping attendance and making sure that you are doing all of that. You're filing quarterly reports and you have standardized tests to be assessed annually. So if you would go like myself, I would never move to New York and not just because I'm from Texas and we're a little biased, but that is just an absolute ton of homeschooling requirements. So these are things that are really important because that could be quite the shock if you're going from like Texas or Oklahoma to a state like New York or Vermont where it is just an absolute ton of regulation. So Please, please, please use this website. I'm going to advocate for it. As I said earlier, there's also um, several state coalitions, which is super handy. Uh, and you can Google them and look look up in your area how to um, how to find those those kinds of groups, local Facebook groups. All of those things are going to be really handy in your journey. Uh, for homeschooling and also really handy in your journey to remain compliant with homeschooling. So I will link this website right here below so that you can have uh, that information just handy and right at your fingertips. Please don't hesitate. Google, man. Google can be your best friend. I believe there's like a, a coalition, a type of support group in every state that gets you out, gets you linked with the people that you need to uh, so that you can understand your rights, so that you can not be bullied by these local school districts, and so that you can comply. It is so important to be sure that you're complying with these homeschool laws for a number of reasons. Violating them can get you ticketed, can get you um, CPS-style investigations, have you violating uh, truancy laws. Um, there's no reason to have any of that hanging over your head. It's just so much easier to learn the laws out front and to then comply with them to be sure that you are doing everything that you need to do because it isn't your responsibility as a, a parent who's chosen to homeschool to be sure that you're doing everything the way that you should. It is also important to maintain that compliance so that if you do ever choose to transition your child back to a public school setting, you're prepared for what that's gonna take to do. And if you've kept your records and done your testings and done all of those things, it will be much easier for you to transition them back into public school. And normally I wouldn't talk about that as much, but this year I feel like there's a large number of people who've chosen to homeschool thinking that there's an end in mind at the end of this year, they will be going back to homeschool. So it's really important to be sure, especially now if that's your plan, that you've got everything in order so that you can transition them back to public school if that's how it shakes out in a year. There are many things that I can't speak about as of my own experience here on this channel, and that is because I am in Texas and the regulations are super low. But many people are in New York where the regulations are very high or in California where it's like a, a little bit more strenuous regulation requirement than here in Texas. Uh, there are moderate regulations in states like Florida. So I just hope that you found some of this helpful, some of these things to keep in mind. It's very important that when you're choosing to do this, yes, homeschool affords you and your family so much freedom. It gives you the opportunity to tailor make an education that is best for your family and your child. However, there are certain things and certain steps that you have to do. So yes, you have the freedom to do it, but you also have the responsibility to ensure that you're doing it correctly, properly, and legally. Make sure that your homeschool is not breaking the law. Thank you so much for coming back and joining us. Uh, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. I hope that you found some of this um, entertaining or informative. Uh, if you would like to let us know what your homeschool states are, what your experience with that has been, or just vent about how they're too much or they're too little, please scroll down and leave us a comment. We love reading about the different things that are happening out in the world.